with tea quilts and I'm here to work on a project I am actually going to be making the crazy quilt blocks I ordered from AccuQuilt the crazy quilt block on the studio die and now they actually have it on the AccuQuilt go die I'm not sure what the finish size is on the go die but on this one, it is a 10 inch finished block. And on the other side, it actually shows you the steps for how to sew your pieces together. So I haven't even opened this. I've had it for maybe a year. And I've been wanting to do this as a project. So let's open this up. Now the one thing that's different from the studio dies and the go dies is that the studio blades are very sharp and they're sitting closer to the surface of the board. So you need to be really careful when you're handling this particular die. So again, this piece of paper was inside showing you how to sew together the crazy quilt blocks. And now, even on the studio dies, they now do the different shading of the two-tone foam so that you can actually see where you need to place your fabrics. So I did a measurement and when I measured, I measured from the edge of this die over to the edge of this die because it's the furthest on this side. And I measured 13 inches. So for me, I like to cut pieces that are a half inch larger than what I need so I'm going to cut these fabrics up here into 13 and a half inch squares I'm gonna make some registration marks on where I'm going to put it on two sides and then we are going to cut out these magnificent pieces so let's talk about the fabric that I'm going to be using I have At IQF in Rosemont, Illinois, this year, last month, I actually purchased this from Connecting Threads. It is called Evening Romance, and it is 30 fat quarters, and it is made off of the Rainbow Cotton, which is a new company that's been promote or a company that's been promoting their co cotton lately, and so this regular price was $66 and at the show it was $46 so I'm not sure if what price it is online but you've got the name of it it is evening romance 30 fat quarters and the number on the back is 92129 so one thing I do want to point out about the fat quarters is that I just pulled them off the stack just to press out the folds and I did notice that they had all like fabrics together so all the dots were together this was an oddball piece and then all of this particular type of floral was together you had your different colorways and then all of this stripe diagonal stripe was together as well and it was like four of those so my point is when you get something like this and then you're going to cut out and I'm going to show you why I want to put these in some kind of an order when I'm cutting them out I'm going to go through and separate these out I have 30 fat quarters on a studio system I can cut 10 pieces at a time so I am going to sort these out so that they are randomly moved around in in between those three stacks and not all of the same print all together in one stack so I am going to sort these and then I will come back so I'm back I have separated my fabrics into three piles of ten and now I am just going to stack them so that I can 
cut them into approximately 13 and one half inches. Remember that all fabric is not going to be lined up equally, so that will also play a part. Trying to make sure you can see what I'm doing here. I don't have the perfect camera angle for this or enough room. So I'm just basically lining up my pieces on my rule on my mat and they're just approximate I've got my fan on so it's blowing this corner here up so I just make sure that I put it back down flat before I add my next piece or while I'm adding my next piece So when I was mixing them up, I made sure that I had dots, florals, the diagonal, um, it was one that had a diagonal stripe, I had some polka dots, and I had some solid prints. So I just made sure that I had equal amounts in each one. And I'm actually going to end up stacking these all into one stack when I'm done so for right now we're just stacking up stacks of 10 fat quarters and the reason why I'm stacking 10 is because my studio die will cut 10 layers so if you were cutting on your gold die you may want to switch that to eight layers So I have my pieces lined up along the bottom edge of a line on my ruler. So I am just going to cut like 13 and a half, 14 inches away from the end. 14 is good. I don't mind wasting a little fabric if I'm going to cut fast. So I'm cutting through 10 layers and I'm actually using my 45 millimeter because my 60 millimeters are all packed up from training or traveling so I'm actually using a 45 on this it doesn't matter because these are not my final cuts so it's not like I'm going to piece these into blocks and so I have a unit that's this size I'm just stacking those all into one stack now I want to come through here and cut the same thing going this direction. So I'm going to count 13 and a half down. And I may just do 13 and 3 fourths just to be sure. And then I'll put one of the lines on the edge down here where I cut to make sure I'm cutting straight. And this is the next piece that I have. So I'm just stacking those all into stacks right now. I'm not doing anything special with those. And I have scored a line approximately one quarter of an inch away from the straight edge of my highlighted portion of my die. And then again, I've done one quarter inch from this edge because you can see here how much more space is available down here. So I actually use this edge and when I use this edge, it kind of ran me off the die, which is fine. And I'm going to align my fabric on these two lines when I cut. And then I'm going to just run these through my die cutter. So let me show you. I've got my stack of fabrics. 
And remember that I cut two cut edges when I cut these to approximate sizes. So those are the, the sides that I'm going to align to my ruler, not the edges that I did not cut. Like I didn't square this edge up or this edge. So I'm going to line up this edge and this edge, which is the two lines, the two sides that I actually cut. And I just want to make sure that they are inside of my markings because my quarter inch is on the inside of this line that I drew. So I am not going to show you the actual cutting because that's very basic. I've showed you that in a lot of videos. I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine three times to cut 30 blocks and I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I have finished cutting my stacks. And I wanna talk about the die for a minute. When I cut my 10 layers, my first and second try, I cut 10 at a time and I had difficulty removing the stacks. The top piece was connected, it had skip cutting. And so I decided on the third cut, instead of cutting all 10 of them at the same time, I cut five at a time and still the top fabric did not cut through so for the last remaining five on my fourth cut i decided to put some paper i keep warm and natural paper by the roll and since i only had five layers i overlapped two pieces so it would it would be wide enough to go over this so i decided that i was going to wait on camera to remove these so let's see if once I take all this paper off, if my stack is going to come apart or if it's still going to be stuck. So it's blowing off which is a good sign so let's see if it's going to work stuff is blowing in opposite direction so <laughs> that must mean that it's going to work and i look like i made a mistake and put this on the board put this one fabric on the board face down all of your fabric should really go on this board face up so I may have difficulty with this one piece here. So I'm going to see if I can remove these pieces. So it's still like sticking to this top layer and I don't know why it's doing that. Although with the paper, it did get better because no pieces dropped out before. So I'm going to have to figure that part out. So this piece I ended up cutting face down. I may have to end up putting it in the quilt face down because these pieces are unique. So make sure when you are cutting your pieces that you make sure all of your pieces are face down or face up when you're putting them into the quilt because I can't turn the piece and make it do the same thing. So this one piece will be a piece that's in my quilt face down. So, I am just stacking them now on top of previously cut pieces. And so I'm not like keeping all 10 sets together. The reason I'm not keeping all 10 sets together is that I get to mix my fabrics up a lot more throughout the 30 blocks. So 
so you already know how I like to show you stuff I like to show you when I mess up as well because all the time everything doesn't go according to plan so now I have to figure out how this goes up here because these are the ones that are stuck inside <laughs> and it's cut on the wrong side so it's twofold i did not even notice that i had right sides the wrong side up but we are going to use it so here are all of the actual fabric that is scrapped so it can be quite a bit of scraps if you don't savage these pieces here that you can use in string and crumb blocks so I'm just going to go ahead and continue stacking my pieces and I am going to move this out though. So now, the next step that I'm going to do is, while these are laying on the board, I am going to change fabric positions on these fabrics so that all 10 of these positions will be different. So there's 10 different pieces that have been cut here. So I'm going to change the fabric on nine of them. The first pile I pick up, they don't have to be in any kind of an order. You can just pick them up and go. I'm going to just take that fabric, place it on the bottom. The top fabric only went on the bottom. Next, I'm going to take the top two fabrics. I'm going to place them on the bottom. Now, because I have more than 10 fabrics and I have 10 positions, I don't have to just do one, two, and three. I can skip and say that I wanted to go to maybe fabric number five so instead of doing fabric number four which is this fabric i'm going to go ahead and do fabric number five here i'll go ahead and do fabric number six so this is fabric number five this is fabric number six And then up here, I'm going to skip and do fabric number eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and here is eight. So I'm gonna put eight on the top. So now I'm gonna put fabric number 10 on top here. So if this is eight, here is nine, and I'm putting fabric number 10 on top. We're gonna do fabric number 12. So if I find fabric number 10, which is here, here is number 11, and right here is fabric number 12. Again, we just go through the pile. We don't have to do any kind of order. We're getting close to the end. And I'll just put this fabric on top. And then this is the last one that I have to change. I'm just going to go through the stack, pick one, and put it on top. Maybe I don't like that one on top. So I can go back through, find where I had that in the pile, got to find it in the pile hold on a second <laughs> so I know what it came before so it was before the burgundy this color here so it came after this color so if I don't like it I can take this and just pull that color up to the top which is on the bottom so I'll just pull that up to the top. 
and this is the order of how I'm going to sew my pieces together so now let's go back to this pattern here that came with the studio where they were showing you how you are going to sew your pieces together so I'm going to take some tape and put them on my block unit so I know which stack is which. So I am going to turn my paper so that it's in the same orientation as the pieces that I have laid down. And I am just going to mark these with the alphabet. So, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, H, I, J. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure I marked those right. So now, when I sew these, I'm actually just going to take this entire stack. And I may make stickers numbered 1 through 30 so I know what order they're sewed in. And then I will sew these pieces together and then I will get them back into the stack in the same order. So I'm going to probably mark all of those so that I know what order they go in. How am I going to press the seams? I am going to press the seams to one side because none of the seams look like they match up in the block at all. So I am not going to worry about pressing seams open. I'm just going to sew my pieces together as shown in a diagram and then I'm going to press the seams to one side however which way it wants to go. So. I am going to come back to this when I get to the sewing. So I am now at my sewing machine and I have my stack of A and B pieces. And I have also put numbers on all of my B pieces. And I'm just going to take them straight stack from stack. So here are my top two pieces. So all I'm going to do is just chain piece these pieces through. I'm just going to stitch my quarter inch seam and then I am just going to go through the entire stack of pieces and stitch them together. So I will go ahead and stitch these. I'll let you watch for a little bit and then I will show you at the end. I have sewn all 30 pairs together. Remember, I'm working on 30 blocks here today. So what I'm going to do is just reach behind and cut off all 29. And so I have them all on a chain. So what I'm going to do is just go back to the beginning, to the top of the list. Everything is in order. And I'm just going to leave it pieced together for right now. And I am just going to take my first ones, which are the ones that have my alphabet letters on them. I'm just going to finger press that open. 
And then on this side, I am now going to add my C. So here are my stack of C pieces. They are not numbered underneath, but I am just going to pull them off in order and put these pieces together. So I am just going to temporarily move my other stack of fabrics that I'm normally sew, put my C's over here, and then I'm going to chain these through. And so I will have all of my sets still in order but then I'll have my numbers on my B pieces. And then I will sew a few of these and I will come back. What I want to note too, which is pretty nice, is that when you have stuff die cut, that it actually lines up pretty even. So you know exactly where you need to place things. There is no guessing. So I'm going to go ahead and sew some of these and I'll be right back. I'm back and I have sewn all of my A, B, and C pieces together. So now I just need to stitch on something to release my pieces. So that's what I will do next. So this is just anything that I'm stitching on, just making like crumb pieces. And now I have my entire set sewn together. So at this point, now I can go ahead and release them because all of them except for my last one, I didn't put a piece of tape on number 30, but all the rest of them have tape on them. So I know exactly what order they go in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and snip these apart. Then I'm going to go to the iron, press them all. It doesn't matter what direction they're pressed. And I will meet you at my cutting area where I have the rest of these pieces laid out so you can see what I will do next. Okay, I'm back in my cutting area where I have all of my pieces laid out. And you can see here where I have pieced the entire stack of the A, B, and C. And I just pressed my seams toward the B and the C units in case you're interested. I don't think it really matters on this. And what happens now according to the instructions, they tell you to sew A, B, and C together. Then they say sew D and E together, so I have those grouped right here. Then they say sew G and F together, and that's the stack here, so I'll be sewing G and F. And then I'm going to sew H, I, and J, so H, I, and J together. So what I was showing you before was that I had marked my under my piece, one of my pieces with numbers. I didn't put numbers on all of my pieces so when I sewed this stack only the B pieces had a number on it so now that I'm getting ready to do my D and E I'm going to flip over my D1 I'm not gonna put anything on it because it already says that it's a D so that lets me know it's number one and then I am just going to go through and put numbers on the rest of the stack 
when I get to the other two stacks here, I'll do the exact same thing. So I have actually four units now. So I took all of my 10 pieces down to these four units. And now it goes together with the highest alphabets first. So I've got H, I, and J here. I'm going to add G and F over onto this side. And then I'm also, once that's sewn, I will add D and E units right here. So this would be D and E. And then once D and E is added, A, B, and C will go down here. Now, while I was working, I also realized that I have the part of my fat quarter that I cut into 13 and a half inches width and then I cut off the extra piece which are these pieces here so I'm thinking I may hold on to these maybe I'll use them for binding I'm not sure yet but I'll hold on to those pieces but I thought with these pieces I really don't need a lot more pieces in my scraps so what I'm going to do is just take I've got 30 of these here so I'm actually going to take them and make 15 pieces of fabric by sewing two of them together long ways and then when I do that instead of 30 pieces that are small I'll have 15 pieces like this and what I'm going to do is cut out 15 more blocks now I'm not sure at this point if I'm going to use them in this quilt but I thought what will happen is my middle pieces like my H so if I laid this piece on here you can see that some of my H G and B will have like two fabrics in them and I thought maybe that would be cool to, cool as well so I am going to test that theory out for you and I will let you know how that comes out as well but again I'm going to go ahead and finish working on these blocks first but I just wanted to give you an idea of what you can do with all of the scraps I just had to go fabric diving <laughs> so yeah so I am so excited with what's going on so far so I am going to continue sewing and when I get blocks made I'll be back so I'm back and I have sewn 12 more blocks together with a half seam. I decided to only do 12 because I could do a 6 by 7 setting with 42 blocks. I already have 30 so I need 12 more. But I cut these pieces and I just want to see how they are going to come off. I ended up using two pieces of freezer paper. And I only put down six squares. So let's see if this is better. See if it comes off any better. So I'm trying to pull off. Let me pull off just the paper first. So that's my frame. It came out clear. So I'm hoping that the frames will help. So that it. I'm hoping that the paper will make it so that. I don't have all these pieces that are stuck. And I put two layers. Hoping that that would work. And it looks like it's a little better. Still got a little bit that I'm still having to trim. But two pieces of paper look like it's working better than one piece of paper. And then like I said, I use freezer paper so it would be a little thicker. And I'm assuming that's where our, my seam allowance is right there. So yes, this is a whole lot better. So if you're cutting out this block... I would highly suggest that you use a layer or two of paper. I would suggest two layers because it definitely worked better than one. And that's why on my 
cut where I showed you doing a previous cut session. I had the ones in the center dropped off because that paper in the middle overlapped. So this time I actually got my big roll of freezer paper and decided to put two full layers of paper down. And now you can see kind of where my pieces are going to be more pieced in the middle. So I'm not going to switch these out yet because I got six more I need to cut. But I wanted to let you know that I did alternate my seam so that the blocks would be different they're not gonna all be the same so i'm really excited about this so i'm going to mark this and then i'm going to do the same process that i just showed you with my other blocks i have all of those blocks completed they are sewn and i'm not sure if i'm going to put them together or not so i want to sew these next 12 and then i'll come back and make some decision so stay tuned for more Okay, so I am back. I have sewn 42 blocks together, so I'm going to do a 6 by 7 setting. I am going to go ahead and mix the various blocks. And on this design wall here at the top, I actually have the blocks that were made where you have the 10 pieces. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. And you've got 10 pieces, so this is 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the top two blocks are made exactly that way. And right now, all the blocks are currently orientated in the same direction so that you can see the differences in the blocks. On the blocks on the bottom, I put four of these up. These were the ones where I took two pieces of fabric and sewed a seam down the approximate middle. And so what that did was it put seams going this way on the block as well as I rotated the seam so that it was going the other direction so that I would have some differences in piecing. So when you start looking at some of these pieces, you will see that there are other piecing coming in that's a little different like here and here. Or a little different this piece and this piece is a little different this piece here compared to there is different and you just got some other additional piecing that happened to occur as I was stitching these seams so some of my E pieces are pieced as well so I think what it does is that it does make the block a little bit more intricate and I do note that you can most definitely piece larger rectangles or squares together and then cut them out and it will give it even more piecing to it. So I am enjoying this process. <laughs> I am, as I said, going to go ahead and mix all of these blocks into one quilt. So I will probably have to find an area to lay these all out so that I can see where I want which blocks and then I will sew them into a quilt top. So hopefully when I get that done I will add just a photo of that at the end of this video. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do about borders. I am not going to do any sashing and borders I haven't decided yet so I will just get this top together and then come back. I'm back and I have actually worked on this quilt top at retreat. I did do another video on this, but I seem to have a corrupt SD card and I lost 90% of the footage that I took at retreat. So I am just going to go ahead and just show you this photo of this finished quilt. I hope that you like it. I hope you can zoom in on it and kind of see where I put the piece unit blocks. I did mix them all together and i will see you in my next video thank you all so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel bye everybody